Good morning. This hearing of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee will come to order. Let me uh, welcome uh, our panelists today. We appreciate your participation. Uh, this year, we have several agreements before the committee, an updated agreement with Taiwan, an extension of the agreement with the IAEA, both of which have been submitted to Congress. The Vietnam agreement has been initialed, as I understand it, and we are looking forward to reviewing it when it is submitted to Congress. Other countries are also seeking to negotiate such agreements with the United States. Uh, over the last several years, the administration has conducted and recently completed a policy review of 123 agreements, and we are looking forward today to hearing the results of this review. One question is how the review dealt with what has become known as the gold standard. Should the United States require countries with which it enters into 123 agreements to completely forego enrichment and reprocessing? And uh, in that respect, I, I uh, will look forward to hearing that response. You know, we have the United Arab Emirates Agreement, which is, in my mind, the gold standard. Uh, and yet we are in the midst of negotiations with Iran, which would permit, from everything I gather from the joint plan of action, some level of enrichment to take place and so, in one respect, you have a very staunch ally who you have this very high standard for. In another respect, you have a country that ultimately engages in a series of support of terrorism across the, the globe that uh, is engaged in Syria, uh, that has challenged the world with its nuclear ambitions, and we're headed to something that's far less than the UAE, UAE standard. So, now, I, I think it's important to get a sense of how we uh, pursue uh, these agreements. If the administration has settled on a case-by-case -case basis, we'd like to know what are the criteria for pursuing or not pursuing the gold standard. In the 1970s, nonproliferation concerns prompted Congress to pass the Nuclear Nonproliferation Act of 1978 requiring states to comply with much more robust nonproliferation conditions before signing nuclear cooperation agreements with the United States. A lot of water has passed under the bridge since then. Iran and North Korea have sought to use the pretense of a civilian nuclear program to work towards nuclear weapons, and the AQ Khan network spread nuclear technology across the globe. Another important issue related to one, two, three agreements is the declining role of the United States in the global export market for nuclear technology. Until the end of the Cold War, the U.S. was the dominant global supplier of commercial nuclear energy technology. Over the last 30 years, we have seen a significant decline in the U.S. share of the market and in our ability to promote national security objectives through peaceful nuclear cooperation. For Congress, the question is how can we support our nuclear industry while at the same time upholding high nonproliferation standards. Section 123 of the Atomic Energy Act charges the Congress and the Senate Foreign Relations Committee in particular with important oversight duties related to these agreements. It is now up to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and the Congress broadly to decide whether we believe the agreement meets the nonproliferation criteria of the Atomic Energy Act and is in the best interests of the United States. And we look forward to our panelists helping to shed light on these issues and understanding a better uh, sense of what the, how the administration views them and the performance of our oversight duties.